okay so dear brethren so we thank our lord for giving uh, it as opportunity to discuss his wonderful words of life so today uh, we are going to see uh, one verse in the bible uh, that is genesis 2:10 can uh, anybody of you read sir most of you can read yeah, okay brother uh, genesis 2:10 uh, and a river went out of eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and become into four heads so here if you say it says a river went out of eden and as it came out of garden of eden it uh, parted into four parts uh, you see so uh, uh, what is the first river what is the name of the first river read verse 11 and 12 brother huh? the name of the first is python and is it which compasses the whole land of havels where there is gold and the gold of that land is good there is beryllium and the ons stone very good the name of the first river is uh, pishon and it goes to the land of havela in the land of havela there is lot of gold it seems okay now let us read about the second river genesis 2:13 and the name of the second river is kihon the same is it that compass the whole land of ethiopia very good so second uh, uh, river name is gihon it goes to land of ethiopia good third river ah uh, verse 14 and the name of the third river is idikel that is it which go towards the east of assyria very good brother the third name river is idikel it goes to east of assyria land of assyria fourth river brother verse 14 and the fourth river is euphrates very good the fourth river is river euphrates so what the uh, does it mean why this uh, you see little uh, information is given to us in the bible see a river came out of uh, eden after coming out of eden it uh, is parted into four parts now what uh, meaning as it got why god has given us this small minute information in the bible who oh, is it necessary for us we might feel like oh this small river came it went out but what is the meaning of it dear brother how do we study the bible we all know that uh, we study the bible here a little there a little is it it so seek out of the book of the lord and study so we need to search the bible for the meaning of uh, this words so you tell me what is the meaning of uh, water in the bible mosamadar ombadar you have studied the classes for nearly almost so many years. months you tell me what is the meaning of water in the bible uh, i think uh, water means not only specific uh, for a specific uh, personality but i think is deeper okay home brother you have any idea brother home brother you have any idea what is the meaning of water in the bible hmm life life okay good next any other meaning now hmm. can we apply that uh, life came out of a garden of eden and is divided into four parts whatever code we apply we should apply it to garden uh, in of eden. I, uh, holy spirit in the sense of holy spirit also the water is used no correct good Sim- very good symbol. yes symbol is used holy yeah. spirit came out of garden of eden ah. then holy spirit was divided into four parts ah. okay see let us read one verse revelation 1715 brother
Revelation 17, 15. Yeah, I think uh, home, home brother. Uh, you, you can read from home brother or uh, master brother. Anybody can read. Yeah, home brother, you can go on. Seventeen fifteen. Hmm. And he said unto me. The waters which thou sawest where the were seated are peoples and multitudes and uh, nations and uh, tongues. Mm. See, the waters means multitudes, nations, people. So, in the Bible, water has got one more meaning. Uh, that is people. So, it is compared to people also. That means, you see, uh, how many people came out from Eden? It was only one. Correct? Huh? One river, one. You see, one uh, family, one parent, uh, Adam and Eve came out of Eden. But uh, through them, what happened? Uh, lot of, uh, you see, generations uh, have come out. Uh, and among them, you see, there are four divisions, it seems. Uh, you see, Tibetan? Now, what is the meaning of this one? Four divisions. You see? Eh? We all know that uh, when, uh, when Adam sinned, he was cast out of the Garden of Eden into the unfinished earth. And through them, the whole world is populated today. So, we are all his children. So, we have, uh, know all these things. So, but we also know that in God's plan, God has made two types of salvation. So, can uh, can you tell me which is the two types of salvation? Mother, mother, home mother, which is the two types of salvation? Earthly and heavenly. Very good, brother. Earthly and heavenly. So, in this uh, earthly and heavenly salvation, there are two parts. In each salvation, there are two, two parts. In the uh, heavenly salvation, you see, which are the two groups that go to the heavenly salvation? Tell me. You can see in the screen, you tell me, among these uh, four categories, which are the two groups which will go to heavenly salvation? Mm. Great multitudes and one lakh forty-four thousand. Very good, Budara. This one you studied in the class of church. Good. But what about the earthly salvation? Who will come to the earthly salvation? Ancient Orthis. Hmm. Then? And the world. Very good, Budara. This is what the four rivers of Eden signify. Simple. So, the entire nation, the entire world of mankind came out from Garden of Eden. You see? Through Adam. But among them, God is segregating the four groups. This is beautiful. This is, see, this is a symbolic language. We all know Abraham was blessed with uh, two types of blessing. I'll make the seed as the star, star of the uh, heaven, star of the sky, and sand of the seashore. So, heavenly blessings, earthly blessings. Uh, isn't there two types of blessings now in Christ? Hmm? Earthly blessings is also there for the whole world. Okay. Now, these are the two parts of heavenly blessing. Two parts of earthly blessing. Now, we, let us see how this fits in that uh, river. Huh? The first river, what was there? It, seems, it went to land of Havila. And what was there in Havila? Home brother, what was there in Havila? Home brother, tell me, what was there in Havila? Also, you know, you tell me. Um, uh, on Havila, there is, there we can find gold, no? Gold. And the land is so gold, uh, so Very good. good. Very and good. Onyx oh. stone is also fine there. Very good. So precious things are found there. Okay. Yeah. Now, you tell me, huh? have we studied about gold in somewhere in the Bible? Think. Yeah, many times. Many times, you should. Very good, brother. Okay. Huh? Now, do you remember this one? 
Home birthday, yeah. Muslim brother, do you remember? Ah, very uh-huh. good. See, all the metals in holy and the most holy were made of gold. But outside, full copper and brass. So the two, two metals, what does it signify? You see, gold always signifies divine nature, the nature which God is having. And the copper always signifies human nature. So, copper is exactly like gold, but not gold. Roll gold, you see, no? Roll gold, and duplicate gold. So, duplicate gold, it looks like gold, but is it gold? No. Uh, that is called as duplicate gold. Therefore, gold always means uh, God's nature. Copper or brass in the Bible always means human nature. How? See, man was created in the image of God. Copper is exactly the image of gold, but not gold. Man is in the image of God, but is he God? No. So, gold means divine nature. Now, you, say, you simply tell me, now in the four categories, you tell me who will go to divine nature, the nature which God is having, immortal nature. Who will go, brother? Home brother, most of tell me. Who will go to immortality nature to be like yeah, of God? course uh, mm, uh, the two top two stand then so both will go uh, no no one forty four only ah very good brother can forty four thousand therefore it is shown by gold so gold how it signifies divine nature similarly this represents the lakan forty four thousand who will go to divine nature very simple see Gold. Eh? Now, uh, let us read Hebrews 3 1, brother. Hebrews 3 1, read, brother. Home, brother, can you read? Yes. Hmm. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostles and high priest of our professions, ah. Christ Jesus. See, partakers of heavenly calling. See, heavenly calling was given to Jesus. Therefore, did anybody go to heaven before Jesus? Jesus was the first one who went to heaven. But did you, before this one, did anybody go to heaven? Tell me. Home brother, Muslim brother, tell me. Did anybody go to heaven? No, because it is written here. Hmm. Correct. No man has ascended to heaven. Heaven. So nobody has gone to heaven. Okay. Even David, everybody are there in the dream of the sleepy nicely. Till the second coming of Jesus. So, who can be of the one lakh party person? What is the qualification brother? to be like, uh, to be of the one lakh party person? What is the qualification that we need? Tell me, brothers. Home, brother. Most of brother, tell me. What is the qualification to win the prize, first prize? Mm-hmm. We, we must. Mm-hmm. First step is of it is it is for the New Testament people. Uh huh. Okay. Home brother, any idea? Home brother, do you have any idea? Okay. Read Romans eight twenty nine, brother. Romans eight twenty nine. Romans 9. Eight, for eight, whom? Eight. Yeah. For whom he did for foreknown, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Uh, and he might. Image of his son. Ah, that is the qualification. If we want to win the crown, we should be like whom? Like Jesus. Very good. So this is a simple. 
Okay, if you are like Jesus, you will get the prize. Therefore, gold, gold, you said, no, your trial of faith is much more precious than gold. So we are tested. Good, okay. Now, simple. See, I am taking very shortly in question way so that you can grasp it. We need to understand the main concept. Okay, now, second river, which place did you go? Gihon. Ah, name is Gihon, but which place did it go? Ethiopia. Very good. Now, tell me, Ethiopia means what? Okay, today, is Ethiopia there? Yeah, it's still. Very, very good. Where, brother? Africa. Very good. This is how you study the Bible. See, Africa. Now, is there anything that is told about Africa in the Bible? Who is mm. the father of Africa? Abraham, no. Father of Africa, as per the Bible. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Noah's, Noah's son. Very good. Noah's son. He had three yeah. sons. One yeah. was cursed. It is Canaan yeah. or Ham. Yeah. You see, cursed be the Canaan, a servant of servants. He shall be unto his brethren. So, this is the servant class. You see, so there is a second class of people who go to heaven to be like servants. The lakh and 44,000 means you're going to be like kings. But, you see, huh? there's other class who are going to go be like servants. Now tell me, who are they? Who are the servant class who will go to heavenly salvation? The second part, the second team, the second group. Which one? Oof. Hmm. The second group will go to heaven. Who? Second group. You just have answered now, just five minutes before. One is who will, who will go to heaven, heavenly salvation? Uh, great, great multitude people, no? Very good. Simple. A great multitude of people. Okay? This signifies a great multitude of people. Okay. Now, why it is compared to Africa? Africa means slaves. Means these are the servant class of people. These won't sit on the crown with Jesus and rule. See, the church is promised to rule with Jesus for a thousand years. Rule as what? Kings and princes. So hence, this great multitude will not rule, but will stand in front of the throne as, you see, as losers. Read, brother. Revelation 7, 9, brother. Revelation 7, 9. Home, brother, you're there. You're there, home, brother. Can you read? Yes, Revelation 7. 9. After this, I behold and you know, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and genders hmm. and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with the white robes and palm in their hand. Very good. See, this is a great multitude stand before the throne, not sitting on the throne. That means, who will be before the throne? On the throne, who will sit? King, who will be before the throne? These are the servants. So, this is a servant class of people who will go to heaven, the second group. Okay? Now, clear. Okay, we know uh, the difference between lakh and 44,000 and the great multitude. You see, the great multitude doesn't uh, offer uh, sacrifice to the Lord. Lakh and 44,000, they completely sacrifice everything for the Lord. A great multitude, no. They held on, hold on to the sacrifices. They don't uh, sacrifice it. Very good. 
Now you tell me which is the name of the third river, brother? Who can tell? Home brother, can you tell third river name? Check from the Bible and tell. Uh. Hmm. Tell brother. Home brother, tell. Okay, Masa brother, you tell me. Which is the name of the third river? Hidikel. Very good. Which place did you go? Assyria. Very good. Assyria. Now, what is this Assyria, Hidikel? You see, Hidikel, it is today's Tigris River. Okay? It is yeah. there in the land of Assyria. Now, where is Assyria? If you see in the world map, Assyria is in Babylon. You see? Therefore, you know, Mesopotamia Valley. You know, why that word Mesopotamia came? Uh, Meso means water. Potamia means two. Uh, so, Meso means two. Uh, Potamia means water. Okay? So, Mesopotamia means a land between two rivers. See? The land between the two rivers. Babylon. Uh, so, who came from this place? Who came from this, uh, uh, you see, place of uh, Assyria? Do you remember, brother? Wasn't brother any idea who came from Assyria? Yeah, to visit uh, Paul, no? To meet Paul. Okay, what's his name? Actually, I forgot their name. Very good. Uh -huh. That is also there. Home brother, do you remember, brother, who came from Assyria? Babylon, who came from Babylon? Home brother? No, I cannot remember. Okay. Master brother, who came from Babylon? Any idea? Babylon. Who came from Babylon? Ah. Uh, is it uh, uh, Joseph? No, he came from Egypt. Next. Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. Okay, I will only tell. See, there was a very, very important person who came from Assyria or Babylon. That is, you see, Abraham. Abraham, when God called him, ah, he came from Mesopotamia. Read Acts. Uh, uh, read Acts yeah, 7. Yeah. Read with the Acts 7 1 2. 7 2, read with her. Acts 7 2, right? Yeah. Mm. Ur is uh, of Babylon, brother. Mm. Read Acts yeah. 7 2. Okay. Yeah, it's written here. Acts 7 2, and he said, right. Men, brethren, and father, fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Meto, Mesopotamia mm. before the dwelt in Charn. Ah, so Abraham came from Mesopotamia, See, Babylon. Yeah. Yeah, it's given now Genesis 12 chapter, read. It is called a Ur of Chaldeans. Chaldeans means that is the ancient name for Babylon. Charon yes. means. Yes. Ah. Genesis 12, chapter 7. Read. Okay. Okay. Now, you see, this means the third group, the river which goes to Assyria, represents the ancient worthies. Why Abraham is there? Abraham was famous for what? Faith. Correct now? Correct now. Abraham is famous for what? Faith. His faith, yeah. Uh, so similarly, the faithful warriors of the Old Testament, the ancient worthies, who proved their faithfulness to the Lord. You see? Let it be anybody. So this is the third category. See? So this will all come in the earthly resurrection in the thousand years. They shall be princes in all the earth. You see, Psalms 45, 16. Today we have different, different department, different, different officials. But in Christ, uh, you see, kingdom, 
these are going to be the visible rulers in the earth okay now let us come to the fourth river last river now your fourth river is what is the name of the fourth river oh brother what is the name of the fourth river jodha huh tell me what is the name of the fourth river oh brother tell me read from the bible brother that's all read from the bible verse no reading port since ah genesis 2:14 ah she dig uh, is third really? river and the name of the third river is hedeco and it is that is it which go toward the east of asaria and the fourth river is you Euphrates. Euphrates. Yeah. So fourth one name is Euphrates. Yes. Now you tell me, we studied about how many classes people? We did we studied about uh, like in forty four thousand? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Did we study about great fortitude? Yeah. Did we study about ancient Vedas? Yeah. Now who is winning? The world. Yes. So Euphrates River. in the bible represents the general world okay those who did not believe in jesus now will all come in the resurrection in 1000 years okay so this is what uh, the four rivers of eden actually represents mm. uh, so very clear now very simple now sir so no need of any complication at all yeah got it a uh, simple see Why I am telling uh, this one, sir? This is a this is a very simple method to how to unlock the Bible. See, symbolic language beautifully is given. Each and every code you take from the Bible, tuck, 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 the Bible will get open. So here, if we can put the Holy Spirit, what will happen? It will get confused. How Holy Spirit? Pour for Holy Spirit. Only one Holy Spirit is there. So what the year? If you put people in the world, four categories people are selected. Now, see, heavenly salvation, earthly salvation. You know one of the beautiful thing uh, in this four river today only two rivers are there, brother. See the world map if you see, see Euphrates and Tigris. This both river are there. Uh, the last two river are there, but the first two river are still not there today. Even if you go to, to Iraq today, you can see the both rivers. Got it, brother? Uh? Yeah. Now why you tell me? Why the first two rivers? are not seen on the earth today why the last two rivers are only seen on the earth today what is the meaning of it the last one is the world and hmm the second last is the ancestor no very good ancient word is okay so i think they will come again in this earth very good they are, uh, the hmm the world is self uh, all only people are they are still living here they are current here so hmm. maybe very good answer brother almost correct the pishon and gihon represent heavenly salvation that is not on the earth so it is not there in the earth it is there in the heavenly salvation so earthly salvation that is seen here hence the two rivers which belong to earthly salvation are still there on the earth the first two rivers which is heavenly salvation heavenly salvation we can't see correct now can we see the heavenly salvation can we see heaven from here no uh, so therefore these two rivers are not visible today got it brother yeah brother simple oh brother got it yes sir so this is how we study the bible okay Okay